Hey everybody, I thought I'd give us a quick video on vaccines. So what does this alphabet soup of vaccines mean that you're getting on your reminder cards from your vet and so forth? So there's a, basically I've kind of broken this down and just give you a real quick uh, overview of the different vaccines. And these guidelines change uh, every year and we watch the uh, American Animal Hospital Association and the American Association of Feline Practitioners to keep up to date with what's best and what's best and what's recommended at that time. And so let's just go through the list real quick. Um, for the dog, there's the DHLP, DHPP or the DA2PP. Sometimes you may see those letters interchangeably and those are actually the exact same vaccine. This is named for the viruses. So you have a distemper virus which causes the disease distemper. You have adenovirus which causes the, the disease hepatitis. And then you have a para, para influenza virus which causes para influenza. This is different than canine influenza or human influenza or the flu. This is para-influenza. We'll, we'll move on down later to see about the dog flu. And then there's parvovirus, which is an is actual parvovirus that causes the parvoviral diarrhea that dogs can get. And so that's a very deadly one is the parvo. So this is something that every dog needs. And they need a series of those shots when they're a puppy. And they need them every year to every three years when they're adults. So it just depends on the age of your dog and their vaccination history. And we're not going to go into all that today. But uh, this leptospirosis, I put it up here with the ones that are needed, even though it is not necessarily every dog needs this but it, it's transmitted by rodents. And so drinking out of mud puddles, if you have an outdoor water dish and, and you don't know who's swimming in that water dish at night when your dog's not out there, it could, uh, your dog can pick up leptospirosis. Well, this is also contagious to humans. So it's a scary thing. We don't want them bringing this home to us either. So leptospirosis, almost everybody should need that. We used to be very careful about leptospirosis because this is actually a bacterin. These are all viruses, this is a bacteria. So this Bactrin causes a lot more reaction. And so sometimes dogs would have swelling and soreness and we didn't want to do it. You know, let's try not to do the lepto because it's going to make them swell. But the new vaccine is, is better than it used to be. So we don't have as many of those reactions. And so again, we always do this on a case by case basis. Every pet is an individual. We have to look at their history and how they live and what vaccines they need and how they reacted last time to their vaccines. And do we want to separate them? Do we want to do them all today? Those things are all things we can talk about when you come in. But um, rabies, rabies is a deadly virus. Once you get it, there's no cure for it. Once your dog gets it, there's no cure for it. You're gonna die from it. So everybody needs to be vaccinated from rabies. Um, some of the other options here, the Bordetella is a contagious cough and often called kennel cough or contagious tracheobronchitis. And so Bordetella is one of the causative organisms in that cough. Our Bordetella vaccine also has a parainfluenza and adenovirus. So when we're vaccinating your dog, we're giving them nose drops that vaccinates against Bordetella, parainfluenza, adenovirus. Then we're given an injection up here that does distemper and adenovirus. This is type two adenovirus that causes the uh, respiratory disease, but it also cross reacts with a um, hepatitis virus and protects against the hepatitis. So it can't cause hepatitis, but it can protect against that. So we're vaccinating in different ways, using different vaccines, and companies are always coming out with new things, and we try to stay up with the latest things and get the best things for your pets. Um, Borrelia burgdorferi, as you know, is the causative agent of Lyme disease. <laughs> we call it Lyme because it's pretty hard. It's a, it's a mouthful to say Borrelia burgdorferi. So it may be known as canine borreliosis, though, if you're reading about it. So if you're searching on the internet, sometimes you can find, if you look under Borrelia, you might find more uh, information than if you search under Lyme disease. Because Lyme disease, I think, is, is really a term from Lyme, Connecticut, where they first discovered the disease. And I think it was a disease in humans. So then if you go Googling stuff, you get a bunch of human literature, which I'm okay with humans, too. I mean, I like them, too. But... Um, Canine influenza is the dog flu. So it may be called CIV if you're in the biz, or you might call it canine influenza, or you might call it dog flu. But you might get particular, our vaccine that we use has two strains, the H3N8 
There's only two strains available on the market for vaccination right now. You have the H H3N8 and H3N2. The interesting about influenza viruses, like just like the human flu is an influenza virus, but it's not the dog flu. You can't get it from your dog, your dog can't get it from you. With one little caveat, these viruses started somewhere else. They, one of them started in birds and then went to pigs and then went to dogs. And one started in horses and went to dogs. So there's a horse flu, there's a pig flu, there's a bird flu, there's a human flu. And you may remember years ago, there was a big scare about the bird flu. There was, there was in, in China that uh, the, uh, the bird flu was starting to adapt and attack people. And so you had people who worked in chicken farms and closely with birds who were getting sick. And we said, oh no, if this is gonna spread like the real flu, it's gonna be a new strain. It might kill a whole bunch of people. It could be very scary. And it turned out it wasn't, but uh, that's a good thing that it wasn't. But um, so anyhow, this is why we vaccinate against the dog flu. We have strange outbreaks every year and different strains of it. And some of, there's some cross reactivity from those different strains and some uh, are protected and some are not. And there's some new strains coming out as well. And the vaccine makers are trying to stay ahead of the disease and the virus. And that's something that's gonna change from year to year. So we'll keep you up to date. So that's pretty much the summary of dog vaccines. If you have any questions, give us a call, 836-2499. Um, if I guess if you're watching this on YouTube and you're uh, you can go to our website at familyvet.org or you can give us a call at 434-836-2499 and uh, that's that's pretty much my summary on the dog vaccines